Some introduction for him, wasn't it? Unbelievable. He is a great fighter, and he's a rough, tough guy. He lacks a little polish, but he's got everything else. Oh, this without a doubt, one of the best and fairest referees around. Whenever there's a major the argument the world over who's going to referee a fight, it usually settles with Arthur McCanty, and rightly them. so. And if you don't, you will be penalized. Shake hands now, and good luck to both of you. Oh. In great condition as well. So this shakes up to be some fight much anticipated. Nine months on from their controversial meeting at the Mirage in Las Vegas, which ended in a draw. Probably 80% of observers felt that Fennec had won that fight fair and square. Certainly everybody in Australia did when they saw it as well. And I must say on my scorecard, I had Fennec a very handy winner that night, but he didn't get it. And this is the result, the rematch in Melbourne. Azuma Nelson in the white shorts, Jeff Fennec, the raging torrent of aggression the man from sydney in the black when they fought before a lot of the action took place almost on the same square foot of canvas in one corner of the ring with lots of pressure from fennec and some very clever counter punching from nelson but in the last round of that previous fight nelson was all but knocked out It does figure that if the fight goes the distance, the one that will finish stronger with Hispanic because he's that much younger and he hasn't had quite the mileage that Nelson's had. But Nelson's such a correct puncher and he's never beaten because he can always pull one out of the bag, even when things look really bad. Yes, he can be a chilling puncher, all right, as you and Nelson ask Pat Caldell about it. Two minutes and 24 seconds in Birmingham with a brilliant left hook come up a cut. And, and ahead on all the three judges' scorecards. Back <laughs> <laughs> with a body punch, good little left hook back from Nelson. Nelson, who says he wasn't really in proper shape for the first fight, he said he'd been suffering from malaria before it, and had a bit of an injury as well. And this time he says, I shall finish off Fennec inside seven rounds. Well, we'll see. first fight was one of the best you'll ever see. Oh, and he's got him with a right over the top. First round. My goodness me. Jeff Fennec goes down. He's been floored before by Mario Martinez and Samak Kayakaru. But that's shot this crowd here. Nelson's punch power. Well, just as we were saying, he can hit, and this is problems in the first round, looking here for Jeff Bennett. My God, and he doesn't normally start as early as that, but he led with his chin up in the air, he led a low jab, and he got crossed with a right hand, and uh, that's a fairly academic punch. And he's obviously got caught a bit cold. He didn't expect Nelson to throw the bombs, but you can't sit back and take it easy with Nelson, but you've always got to be careful. Fennec, a three-time world champion, 
who's never been beaten. Just that draw, the only blot on his record in the first fight with Nelson. But what a start here. Well, he's got it to do now. This is so sharp from Nelson. That was a wicked left hook to the body from him as well. Oh, yeah. There's the end of the first round, and it will be probably scored that as a 10-8 round to Azuma Nelson, a two-point margin. Oh, yes, definitely so, because besides the knockdown, he won the round anyway. He landed the most punches, even if there hadn't have been a knockdown, I would have scored it 10-9. And with the knockdown, you've got to score it 10-8. Jeff Bennett bidding to become a four-times world champion here. He's been world champion at bantamweight, super bantam and featherweight before, bidding to have the super feather title here. Now this is the crucial piece of action in this first round. There you go. There you go the right hand over the jab. is deposited onto the seat of his pants. Super crisp punch. Beautiful, beautiful right hands. But Nelson doesn't throw anything but crisp punches. <laughs> That's the big danger with him. Second round coming up here then. Nelson in the white shorts, Fennec in black, and Fennec down dramatically in the first round of this rematch. We're talking about Fennec being a national hero in Australia. Nelson certainly is in Ghana. When he fights, there's big crowds to see him off at the airport. There are drums beating, they have barbecues, and he lives in a palatial home where people come to pay homage outside. Oh, yes, unbelievable. The only problem is they can't afford to pay to see him. Uh, the, the people that have come there, that looks like about 20 of them, they must all be multi-millionaires. Well, when you think about it, the... Uh, I think the average wage in Ghana is about 500 pounds a year, and he's on something like 500,000 pounds here tonight, Nelson. In other words, he could go home and buy Ghana. <laughs> Probably good. Good left jabs from him. He looks much, much sharper here than in the first fight to Nelson. 33 now. A lot of people believing that he might be ready for the taking, but that's always dangerous. And look at that typical aggression from Fennec. He's prepared to walk through some punches to land his own, try to wear you down. Slightly different fight from the first one so far in that Nelson is coming forward a little bit more and playing Fennec in his own game, not counter punching so much. No, and uh, he's taking the counter punches so far on the gloves. Look at that, that was a good move. He moved away from the right hand. He's, he's trying desperately hard to, to be first all the time and so far he's succeeding. That's a good rally, that's a typical Fennec rally. They're the kind of rallies that will win in the fight if he can keep it up. Benek, of course, is the younger man, and he would fancy his chances, I think, as he did in the first fight, of wearing Nelson down, the older man, in the closing stages. As long as he doesn't run into a right hand like he did in the first round. Credit Benek, though, Mickey. He's come back pretty well from that knockdown. Oh, yes, you wouldn't know he's been down so far. He's a tough guy. That, that's why this is the kind of a fight that it's advertised to be, and that's why you've got nearly 40,000 people here. And that's only a slap this time. No, I don't agree with that. Oh, wow, this is controversial. Arthur McCanty is now counting this as another knockdown. He makes Fennec take a standing eight count. Well, we'll have a look at the replay at the end of the round, but it was hard to discern the punch that was responsible for that if it was a clean knockdown. Real problems for Fennec now because he could be here on the uh, wrong end of another two-point margin round against him. Of course, forewarned is forearmed as far as Nelson is concerned. He knows what Fennec is like from the first fight now and he looks much sharper this time. I give it to him by, by two points because there was nothing in the round. Nobody was winning it and nobody was losing it. So the knockdown has got to be a two-point round. Just doesn't quite seem to be getting his punches off quite so well. In this fight, Johnny Lewis there in the corner. Johnny Lewis who says that Fennec can be a wonderful friend, but he can also be the most terrifying and vicious person alive. Now let's have a look at this again, Mickey. 
Now, that missed him. That was not a knockdown. But once he's counted... Now, let's have a look at this again. Nelson does land a right hand. Now, is there a delayed action for... Now, he missed with that one. There. And that... There. Yeah, but that one only caught him on the shoulder. I think that unbalanced him more than anything else. Anyway, it's the referee's decision that counts, and he scored as a knockdown, and we have to score it accordingly. Yep. He's closer than we are, and he's a good referee, so I think you have to say that maybe Arthur McCanty may have got that right, but um, it was one of those, really, that you can pay your money and take your choice. There's no doubt that Fennec is certainly feeling the weight of Nelson's punches as what 37 others have done before him. Exactly. Good right there from Fennec. And then the left hook to the body. And that was left uppercut. That was a good shot from Nelson. Look at the way fast punches do. And look at Fennec having to cover up here. This is a different Azuma Nelson from the one we saw in Vegas. I was just thinking, he's not letting Fennec do anywhere near the amount of work. He's not letting him get into the fight at all. And any time he does, and maybe I've spoken too soon, this is the best rally he's had probably. Fennec has got to get through these early stages and look at the way he's come back now with hooks to the head. Yeah, very much so. This is the first fight revisited, this scene. Nelson on the ropes. Relentless aggression from Fennec. He's a terrible handful to have to face in there. But he still doesn't have Nelson's power. Nelson covering up well there. Coming back with his own counters. This is what made the first fight so difficult to score that so much of the action was like this. Exactly. But Oh, left hook, Nelson. But a lot of Nelson's punches are missing. Little uppercut inside, but uh, you can see the judges' problems. How do you score exchanges like this? You've got to watch it very carefully indeed. Oh, I've got Fennig winning this round. I've got him winning this round comfortably because he's getting by far the better of the, of the exchanges and he's making Nelson miss with most of his counter punches. One or two are getting home, but the bulk of them are missing. It's good pressure from Bennett. There's some uppercuts and then a couple of right crosses as well. This is quite a comeback from the Australian in this round. Two more head punches got through and Nelson looks a little bit open. He tries to battle back, but he's being outgunned. And Bennett won't let him out of there. He's almost stapled him to the ropes. It's a pity that Bennett doesn't punch a bit harder. These would have a lot more effect. The I think punches are more more flurries than than solid punches. I think the effect, though, Mickey, is often with him cumulative. Oh, sure, and they'll have the effect of tiring Nelson, who's a much older man of the two. But look, oh, and they want to carry on with it after the bell. That was some round. That seventh defense of the title he won against Mario Martinez four years ago. In fact, four years and one day ago, exactly. It was February the 29th, 1988. But he was, cha he was featherweight champion for Donkey's years before that. I'm sure you all know the exact amount of years better than I do, but he seems to have been world champion at either featherweight or junior lightweight forever. Yeah, it was 1984 to 87 when he was featherweight champion. All starting with a chilling 11th round knockout of Wilfredo Gomez in Puerto Rico. That was the... Uh, Action right on the bell from the previous round. Out they come for the fourth, and it's another thriller. It certainly is. It certainly is. And, and in that round, Fennec turned the fight right round. Now let's see if he can keep it up. Round four. Good jabs from Fennec right at the start of the round. But once it gets into that close quarter brawl, Fennec, I must say, looks more effective. Faster hands, I think, is the answer, but he doesn't have the power that Nelson has. A lot of people compared Bennett when he first started to a young Roberto Duran with his relentless swarming style. I think you'll find that Panic's right eye is cut. 
Yeah, there does look to be a nick there. You're right, actually, Mickey. Nelson coming in behind those high-held gloves, waiting, watching for the opportunity to explode that he heavy artillery that he has. That's the one amazing thing about Nelson, is you can hit him five or six or seven punches, and one punch in return levels things up. Yes, Penny's already being bothered by the eye, he just wiped it with his glove. And that was a good left hook to the side. And then body punches back from Fennec. Fennec with this eye problem. This is the fourth round. We'll have a look in the corner at the end of the round and see just how serious that is with the close-up camera, maybe. Fennec just getting his gloves up and trying to protect that eye a little bit. That, of course, may affect his tactics a little. This is a different round again. With them both almost relying on jabs until that left hook from Fennec. It does look a bit dodgy, that right eye, I must say. Of course, the other problem Fennec has and has had for a long time is bad hands. He's needed five operations on his hands and has had to retire twice. It seems to be all right so far. He's having no trouble letting punches go. And he's getting hit. This round is boxing very well. He isn't landing that many punches, but he's getting hit back with comparatively nothing. Here's the countdown, last half a minute of the fourth round, a quieter round from the last one, the body punch from Fennec. Good right from Fennec, and then he slipped the counter coming in from Nelson. Yeah, and he's taking most, absorbing most of the punches on his gloves. Good left hook to the body, two from Nelson, then uh, from Fennec rather, then a right to follow it. Fourth round, and maybe Fennec had that one as well. Four rounds gone here, and really is some fight. Well, so much rain in Melbourne. The crowd are absolutely drenched, and they're having to stop it getting into the ring. Now, this is a problem because it shouldn't, in theory, get onto the canvas because of a canopy over the top. Except that the rain comes in from the side, and the wind sweeps it in. And a rainy canvas will affect Fennec more than it does Nelson, who tends to, tends to stand on flat feet. And if they can get a crowd of 38,000 when it's raining like that, what would it have been on a sunny day? My God, yeah. Fennec really is a massive sporting figure uh, in Australian terms. Rather like uh, Frank Bruno, I guess, in Britain. Fifth round here now. And this becomes ever more intriguing. Nelson on top early on with two knockdowns. Fennec beginning to claw his way back and get a real foothold in the fight. I make him two points behind basically on the two knockdowns. In, in rounds, I've got them winning two rounds each. Nelson, who's been around at the top now for 10 years. He just landed two good punches, a right hand over a jab, and then a left hook over a right hand. Oh, that's a great right, right hand. that shook Fennec, that did. And then that right uppercut, these are problems for Fennec. His head clears quite quickly, but you almost saw his eyes go into orbit when one of those shots went through. There's no doubt about it, the more concussive punch is with Nelson. Oh, but for his punching power, uh, Fennec would win this fight easy, but that's what le that's the great leveler, that one good shot of Nelson's is as good as six of Fennec's. May not score as many, but it's, physically it has that effect. You see, he just hit Nelson with two good punches, but they had hardly any effect, comparatively speaking. The last person, indeed the only person to stop Azuma Nelson was Salvador Sanchez in the very last round when Nelson came in at short notice for his first ever world title fight and that was 10 years ago. And he was ahead on all the judges' scorecards going into the last round. That's right, he fought so well there that nobody wanted to know him for another couple of years. Panic 
getting through with some head punches. But Nelson, so far in this round, particularly with that impressive opening 30 seconds, would I think be ahead on the scorecards. Good jab, that's good punching from Nelson. Two jabs, doubled up on it, then the right hand. And that's a good shot though from Fennec in return. There's not a lot in these rounds. Oh, there's the right. And this time it's Nelson who has to cover up. And look at the way he battles back and fires back. Neither man prepared to give way, not only physically, but sort of psychologically as well in there. Yes, definitely so. Uh, I think Fennec has won this round. I just think he landed the more punches of the two. Unless something happens in the last, in the closing seconds. Gumshield came out, I think it was Nelson's. Referee will let the action go on for a moment before getting that put back in, or he may let the round finish. Indeed he does, which is sensible refereeing. Well, Mickey and I may differ on that one. I think I might have just given it to Nelson. No, I, I think Fennec won the round. I really do. Action again from that fifth round. There's the uppercut, and there's that right hand that buckled the knees of Fennec. That was the punch of the round. It was, I guess, how you scored the rest of it, um, which is why Mickey and I are at disagreement. No problems about that, because judges do it all the time. And I've got the right from, from Nelson I have them well. exactly a point apart right now. I've got Nelson ahead by one point by virtue of the two knockdowns. And I have Fennec ahead by one round. I've got it two points to Nelson at the moment. Six round coming up. One of the big question marks in this fight is will Azuma Nelson fade in the closing stages will those 33 year old legs begin to take their toll i don't know i think i doubt that actually uh, he somehow gets stronger in most fights as old as he is he seems to wear the opponents down i think because he makes them he paces himself better he makes them do more work than him and he just lands the telling punches and therefore he has the stamina to finish stronger usually than most of his opponents but this panic's a tough guy you can never tell Good. Yes, it's all non-stop aggression with Fennec. It's him with the right hand. The feeling that Nelson is the superior technician and has the superior power. But how do you stop this tide of pressure from Fennec? He's, he's pushing his way through to success in the last couple of rounds. He's just leaning on Nelson and not letting him work and stealing a few rallies. They're not really very effective. They're point scoring, but they're not, they're, they're not taking anything out. And you see, when Nelson lands a couple of punches, as he did just now, that's physically a great leveler. If not on the scorecards, it's certainly a leveler as far as the physical strength of the two are concerned. And if there was another good right hand. Fennec is made to miss with the follow-up. Looks a little bit wild there, Fennec. I must say, a crisper punching from Nelson. But look at this pressure you see all the time from Fennec. He's prepared to use his elbows, his shoulders, anything could do. He's a rough, tough brawler. And that, you know, is the advantage of fighting at home. You get away, just about get away with those things where the visitor doesn't. Nelson having to cover up, but he's very adept at doing that. He's been through all of this many, many times before. And nearly always, he's prevailed. Little, good little right crosses. And when it gets like this, Fennec looks the governor. How many counters can Nelson produce in this situation? Won't take many, you know. Two or three good ones would do it. Oh, oh that was a good one. one. Yeah, that was a good right there. And Nelson see, giving as good as he gets, and better yeah. in fact, here, yeah, and yeah, another left. <laughs> those two punches nullified all those combinations at San Agree. Well, the better punches are from Nelson. Here, there's no doubt about it. Fennec. By comparison. And I think he's just a little bit shaken up.
by someone oh, that hit him down the table. Benek is in trouble here. And the bell comes, and it couldn't come a moment too soon for Fennec. Zuma Nelson, big round. That's a right eye, doesn't look so good either, Mickey. No, it, 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 the cut is in a bad place. I don't know how bad it is, because we we're not close enough to it. But it's certainly in a bad place, right over the eyebrow. And uh, if, it's, if it's a bad cut, then he's in trouble with it. But they don't seem to be too concerned. They're not doing any much about it anyway. And they have the old iron out there. It's just closing a little, that eye, and there is a cut, but it's nothing uh, that looks too terminal at this stage. This is this rough, tough exchange. Oh, that's a good shot. Yeah, Nelson got the better oh, of this. There's another one. I love you so much. Out this little what a fighter he is, Azuma Nelson. British fans know all about him. He beat Pat Cowdell in Britain, and he beat Jim McDonnell in a much, much tougher fight a couple of years back. Seventh round here. 33 year old Azuma Nelson looking as good as ever. But Fennec is so strong. Unbeaten, of course, in 27 contests. Well, I have him three points behind in this round, and I, the last round looked to me like Nelson, Nelson's beginning to take over. Fennec now choosing to dodge around the ropes, which is not kind of his style, really. This is more like it from him, though. Gets through with a couple of rights. Looking for any signs now at this stage of the contest that Nelson might be slowing down a little bit. And I think a little bit of tape's come loose on Azuma Nelson's blood. And they want that put back. And that's only right because if it flicks into the eye, it could cause all sorts of damage. The problem with this fight, uh, Ian, is that at any stage, when Nelson cuts loose, he has a far better chance of hurting Fennec than Fennec has of hurting him. He levels a lot of the action out with two or three solid punches, as he did in the last round. Zuma Nelson, well, they say that the best exports from Ghana are cocoa, gold, and Azuma. <laughs> There's Fennec. The eye damage doesn't look too bad, Mickey. No, it looks like they've done a good job on it, or it wasn't too bad to start with. It's just in a dangerous place, but if it's not bleeding, they've got no problem. After the first controversial fight, Fennec said he would never fight in America again after that decision, and even Jose Suleiman, the WBC president, called it a grave controversy. That landed on the gloves, that punch from Fennec. Something else, of course, the judges have to look out for. How many punches land on gloves and elbows? How many get through? And, and the quality of the punches. And the better quality shots in this contest so far have come from Azuma Nelson. Oh, almost all of them. Good left hook. That one got through behind the gloves. Jeff Fennec. Nicknamed the Thunder from Down Under. But most of the lightning has been coming from Azuma Nelson in this one so far. This round is pretty close. Slightly quiet around so far. And that's good from Bennett. Rocked Nelson's head back a couple of times. Nelson hasn't fought at all since the first match nine months ago. Fennec's had one routine fight, just a mark time, points win. Nelson scoring with his jab. It's a good right, though, from Fennec, who once again wants to get into that uh, close-range barroom brawl if he can. His hands are much faster than Nelson's, but he doesn't have anywhere near the power. This is a better round, though, for Jeff Fennec. Yes, he's, he's, he's in, in professional terms, he's stealing the round. He's starting to find a way through in this round. He's got through with some head punches. 
He's working on the basis that if you throw a lot, some will get through, and it's working, and it's certainly in this round. And that was Stanek's round, I think, no question, I think. Yes, I agree. On, there's the Azuma Nelson corner. Tip, tip. Trying to keep him cool. He looks very cool, doesn't he, in his approach. He's sitting there very unperturbed. That's one of his big strengths, I think, really. He's got such a brilliant boxing brain. Yeah, and good mentality. Jose Martin, Rafael Martin, in the corner with Nana Yor Kanadu, who was super flyweight champion for a while. Johnny Lewis doing most of the talking in the Fennec corner. Fennec, who almost single-handedly led a big Australian boxing revival. Jeff Harding and the Waters brothers also involved in that. And Joe Bugner even for a time. Now can Fennec build in the last round he had? Nelson starts fast in this one. Every time uh, Fennec puts a load of combinations together, uh, Nelson seems to neutralise it with one big punch. There you go. Really is another fascinating fight, this one, with the plot thickening all the time. Just look at Fennec. He's taken all those shots from Nelson. But his head clears and back he comes again. That was a good left hook. Now these really are the sort of fights that age boxes. Hard, grueling affair. Good left from Nelson, then off the ropes. You be the judge here, you try and score this. At home, good left again from Nelson, but the right coming in from Fennec. But the power is coming from Nelson, as you can see. That was a good hook. Halfway through the eighth round. And they're back on that favorite little square foot of canvas. It really is the fight in a telephone booth. Oh yeah, this is a rough fight now. Kind of leaning on, pumping away with body punches. And just occasionally, back comes Nelson with a wicked left hook oh, like that one. There he is. He's rocked him. Oh. Now Fennec's going and he's down again. And this is trouble. This is trouble in the eighth. And he gets up too quickly. And boy, he looks bad. He just shook his head to the corner. Nelson might finish this here. He's good at doing it. There's no doubt about it. Fennec is shaken up. And he's going to be stopped. It's all over. Oh, and that's so. Nelson in round eight has pulled off one of the great wins of even his illustrious career. What a finish. Unbelievable. The chilling puncher from Ghana. Everybody said in the first fight, or most people said, that he'd lost it. They said he didn't deserve the draw. But he settles the argument once and for all in the most emphatic fashion in the rematch. And this Australian crowd, as if they hadn't had enough shots with the way their cricketers had been going in the World Cup, are stunned by that. To use an old saying, he brought his own referee. Tremendous punching. It's really, as Nicky and I, I think, were saying most of the way through, that Nelson had the extra power. He'd shaken up. Fennec, he had him down in rounds one, a bit controversially in the second, but no doubt about it in the eighth. As I said earlier in the round, all the punches of uh, Nelson seemed to have far more effect than those of Fennec, and one good shot did it. And Jeff Fennec has been beaten for the first time in his career, and as Yuma Nelson, well, he just rolls on and on. superfluous we all know what's happened here one of the great performances from a great boxer wonderful two or three combination punches he absorbed and then he let two punches go himself 
and it was all over. That's the story from Melbourne as Human Nelson beats Jeff Fennec, eighth round stoppage. Student to school. That's right. After them, I'll teach them. After now, I knock him out, like I said before. I'll be the guy, and then after I beat him, I'll show him his mistake. <laughs> uh, we have with us the game loser, Jeff Fennec, and uh, we were we we're saying that it's almost a professor teaching a student today because his left jab was so educated in the first round and caught you off guard. Yeah, oh, I've never underestimated him. He's a great champion and he proved it tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you have done anything different? Um, uh, you know. Jeff, could you have driven him to the ropes like you did in Vegas and why didn't you? Um, I was happy in the middle of the ring. I, you know, he proved he's a great fighter. I've never underestimated him. He's a great champion and he proved it tonight. Would you like to have another go at him now that you've had a draw and, and this resounding defeat? Definitely, I, you know, hope I can well, do you, You've got again. a big heart, but uh, but that uh, coming back from two knockdowns in the first and second round would take an awful lot of doing. You fought your heart out, and uh, what are your plans now? What do you? What would you like to do? I'll just have a rest and I'll just see how I feel and I'll just look at it in. All right, and Azuma, of course, you're going to go on until you're 85, I know. <laughs> no, you know, um... Uh, he, he don't have to stop the fight, you know. If I beat, if, if I beat him, he don't have to stop the fight. Because I'm the best in the, in the division, understand? And if I move up, he's going to take over. And yeah. nobody can beat him in that. that and point. you think you will move up? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for a, 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 the, uh, how to come, Whitaker. Whitaker again? Because, because when I fought Whitaker, the same, pro the same problem that I have when I fought uh, the champ, the first fight. Right, and this time I'm going to prove. I just want to. I just want to. Uh, uh, I just want right. Suleiman to give me the chance to prove that I'm the you best. You will go up and fight Pernell. That leaves you wide open to be to contest for the champion in your division. You satisfied where you're at? I'm definitely happy. I, you know, I can make feel the way, but I'm happy. I, I was beaten by a great champion. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for a very valuable. <laughs>